1920, Brook, Indiana was the birthplace of what's become Newton County's annual pumpkin vine fair. It was organized by local farmers and breeders with the help of the brand new Indiana Farm Bureau. This ribbon on display at the Newton County Historical Society is from that very first fair. It was awarded to Howard Washburn for a well-oiled black hog. After two years of enthusiastic support for the stock show, local farmers and county leaders came together to create a permanent annual event. Membership certificates were sold for $10 each to men in the county, and Roland Aide became the first president of the Newton County Fair Association, serving 45 years. In 1922, the fair was moved to its permanent home at the county farm in Washington Township. The Roaring Twenties brought dramatic social, economic, and political change. Newton County's Warren T. McRae was elected governor of Indiana in 1920. Syndicated humorist George Aide of Brook teamed up with Purdue University alum David Ross to buy 65 acres and donate construction funds for Purdue football's Ross Aid Stadium. Of national significance, prohibition took effect and women got the right to vote. In May of 1924, members of the Women's Club of Kentland made a special request of the Newton County Commissioners to secure and hold for the pleasure and benefit of all the people of Newton County, a small tract of timbered land as a public park. There are a few tracts remaining along the Iroquois River that might be secured for such a purpose. Respectfully, the Federated Club, Women of Newton County. The following year, in a park-like setting along the Iroquois River, a new eight-sided building was erected to showcase the creative talents of Newton County. The Floral Building, now known as the Domestic Arts Building, showcasing culinary excellence, baking, canning, sewing, quilting, gardening, and fine arts. So why an octagonal building? Polygonal barns like the Floral Building were popular and central in Northwest Indiana in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. These two are examples at fairgrounds in Winnemac and Portland, Indiana. Barn expert Duncan Campbell says multi-sided structures provide more usable floor space than a traditional box-style barn. It's not that unusual to have an octagon building built in the 1925 period, but it's kind of unusual to see one be altered in this way. So we're looking at probably the original part at each end. I'm assuming they just took one end, one end off and moved it down and built linear walls in between. The alteration came during the Great Depression. Works Progress Administration, WPA laborers, expanded the exhibit space in 1938. They already had a cupola probably to start with, and so finding a way to continue it just, you know, makes sense. The general statement about WPA work, it was very, very high quality work. Ronald Dawson accompanies his wife Rose to the building with her domestic arts entries, but he first stepped in as a small child. I was about six years old, and I stayed with my aunt and uncle out here at the farm. And uh, from that day on till now, I've always been amazed by the structure of the building. The amazing thing is they didn't have power tools. They had hand tools. Buildings that, like the barn behind us, they've been around for 100 years. They've been used and loved for 100 years. And it's important, I think, sometimes for communities can lose sight of that. Um, people are still using these structures. They still make a difference in people's lives. Rich and Janet Miller and their two daughters moved into Janet's grandparents' farmhouse just across the road from the fair in the late 1960s. My name is Rich Miller, and I've been in Newton County since uh, I was about three years old, I guess. We went to the fair back then. My dad was on the, uh, worked with the fair board. He did the agriculture building. As a kid, sometimes Rich stayed overnight at the fair with his animals and plotted to get goodies in the domestic arts building. As a young boy, I remember going in, 
sneaking in there sometimes at night and trying to steal a pie out of the cabinets. <laughs> you could get in through the windows. <laughs>